Hmm. Okay. So we are now living in a cinematic world and everybody wants to be cinematic. So let's fucking do it. I'm in these safety. Tell the app can't snake me. Ray gun on safety. My girl so tasty. Tell the issue well. She want the two tone spaceship. Blow a smoke screen daily. So the stress don't face me. I'm going. I keep it factual. Okay, so how do you make something look cinematic, basically? Okay, I don't know anything. I don't know how to hold the camera. I don't know what camera I have. I don't know if the camera I have can work. I don't know nothing. From the complete basics, where do I begin? Okay, for the first things first, you're gonna need a camera. Obviously, Samsung iPhone doesn't really matter as long as it shoots 4K. Not very important, but for me, it's very important. I personally try my best to shoot everything in 4K as long as I have the space on my phone. Yeah, basically, there's nothing that crazy to it. You just need to shoot 4K so that you have like a more clear video. And if you use any filter after that, if you shoot in 4K, then it's going to really help get that color a pop. Once you've added that filter on your editing app and you've downloaded it into your photo library, it's already probably saved in HD. So once you upload it on Instagram, it's again going to probably downgrade its quality from HD to probably like a low version of HD. But if it does, then it'll still look good. Second thing is your camera settings have to be right. Okay, when it comes to shutter speed, basically the setting on your phone, which is over here, like near 4K, you see that 24 thing. If you are recording the audio separately on like another phone or like another mic or something you've bought and it's attached to the iPhone, you need to be shooting on 24 frames per second because then the audio is going to be like perfect. And in the editing process, it's going to like match. And if you're going to be slowing something down, then you need to be shooting 60 frames or higher because you need 60 frames or higher to have any sort of slow motion in any any form of video so just that's for a longer video i'll explain that later only if i have the intention of slowing something down or making it slow motion is when i'm going to be putting it into 4k 60 frames per second shooting 4k also has its own perks for example like when you're going to be color grading it and adding like a filter to it or something it has more like um sharpness and like a uh, more detail in the shot so you're going to get a lot more colors out of it so if you can trust me shoot in 4k because pss, you're not going to regret it Number three, if you're using like a camera, like a Sony camera or something, I'm just gonna show you the camera that I'm using. I'm currently using the Sony Z1 at 4K, 25 frames per second. The reason why it has so much light is because I'm shooting at f2.2. The lower the number, the higher the amount of light that you can pull in. But basically this is the camera I'm using. And obviously I have an external mic. Try to shoot an S-Log3. Uh, keep your picture profile probably PP7 or PP8. I shoot in PP8 usually. Um, I don't know why. I just like it. These are my picture profile settings in case you guys want to copy it. But trust me, the Sony camera's gamma assist display is such a big help. Like I use it every time I shoot because I just like to be safe. Now when you shoot raw, all of the footage is going to be looking like this and you're going to be confused as to why is it so washed out. It's because all the camera is not capturing any detail, no color, like all this color is not getting captured currently because currently the camera is shooting this. Yeah, it's like this flat. But then later when we edit it and I get it back to the settings as to how bright I want the scene to look like. So I'm not telling the camera to choose how bright I want my skin to look. I can later adjust that it's basically like shooting a raw picture on your iphone like when you go and you hit raw camera raw and then you can later edit and then you can see oh wow the light is like getting changed as if i'm changing it as if it was on the scene that's basically what shooting raw is and for video it's really helpful because then you can have like this look or like this look or like this look or usually just the usual look that i tend to usually have which is oh wait this i just like it i don't know i like some green joker kind of a tinge in my videos i have a soft corner for it number four would be lighting you really need to have good lighting for example this light at the back it's just a mini light that i've put on a tripod um that light is mentioned in my other video you can check it over here top right corner um you can go shop in my amazon storefront it's really nice it's really cheap it's small and it's rgb so it has like complete rainbow colors you can have it into pink green blue whatever color you like this guy is the godox sl 60 watts uh i'm using this with like the digitech dome on it uh in case you guys want to see the entire setup it's mentioned in that same video try your best to use natural light but in case you're using like a godox light or something else for example the light at the back or using any other light or uh, any fake light basically then um try your best to uh, always have like a lot of light on your subject your subjects the person in front or the person who's getting shot this could be your subject if this is what your shot is and this is your subject so you need to have a lot of light on the subject or else it's just gonna look like really grainy and bad you're not gonna have a lot of detail on it that just basically beats the entire purpose of shooting the video 
if you're shooting Sony RAW and you're going to be color grading it later, you have to be shooting uh, with your exposure compensation at plus 1.3 or plus 1.7 don't cross two i don't think you can cross two it's going to start blinking try your best to keep your exposure at plus 1.3 to 1.7 because then whatever lut whatever color grade whatever filter you're going to be using later in the editing process or the editing software you're going to be using is just going to be delicious trust me it's going to look amazing or else it's going to be underexposed and you're going to have like a lot of grain on it and it's going to look like shit and it's going to look like you tried to have a cinematic video and then it's going to be like Number five would be stable movement or a tripod. I personally use the Manfrotto tripod. If you want to purchase it, it's quite expensive, not gonna lie. But it's a game changer, trust me. Like once I got it, I was like, oh shit, I literally broke the bank and I got it. And then I was like that much for a tripod. And then I was like, whoa, that really saved a lot of time. It solved so many problems. Like probably a shoot that I was like, get it done for like two hours, got done and like, 25 minutes because I could just like move everything. If I want an overhead shot, I would just like open the tripod, press the button, turn the rod and just put it back and it would just be like completely over, like an over the shoulder rig. And I was like, that is just insanely smart. If you are starting out, I do not recommend the tripod I use because it's quite expensive and it's not needed if you are starting out. There are quite a lot of alternatives that have lately come out. Um, you can have those you can start out with those they're not that expensive in fact i was purchasing another one that was probably five times less the price of my actual tripod that i currently use because i feel like i can use that for my iphone that is too big to keep carrying around it's quite heavy not gonna lie um but you can start out with those save the money put it into probably a camera or something like a editing software number six is sound you could play around with like a lot of textures you don't always like keep a song at the back and mute the background audio like see how you can keep like the rain sound like the natural car sound uh the probably the traffic sound and make something feel like cinematic while the music is going on as well it's not the visual that you need to focus on when you want to make something look cinematic it's also the audio that you need to focus on because for example if the audio sounds like this you're not even gonna think this is like even a good video forget it being cinematic so if you want something to be cinematic and you want to get like the complete feel of the video your color has to be right and the audio also has to be right if you want good sound then consider having like a mic like this this is the Rode Video Micro Go or Mini or something like that. I'm really not sure. It's the Rode Video Micro or you can have like a Boya lapel or Lavalier mic. Both are mentioned down below. You can check that out. They have really good sound quality. Number seven would be use a good filter when you are editing. Um, if you're editing in like a Final Cut Pro software or like a Adobe Premiere software, like something that's advanced on like a laptop or something, not on a phone, then these are some things you need to like keep in mind. No matter what it is, just keep your time when on 24 frames per second. Make sure your project property is also 4K if you're shooting 4K or else you're going to be just downgrading it to HD and editing it. Then you're going to be saving it in HD again. It's just point care 4K shoot karke. Just make sure it's on 4K before you start editing. During your entire timeline, make sure you have good, smooth fade in, fade outs. You're taking the audience from like an um, emotion to like probably a, like a high peak, and then you're probably taking the video down again and then probably lifting it up again. Just have like probably a story to it or like something that you think that, okay, how am I gonna, okay, if I wanted to see a video like this, how would I like visualize it? You really have to visualize your video in your head. Trust me, you're gonna look like a stupid retard when you're gonna be sitting down. You're like, hmm. Kaise lagna chahiye? But trust me, that is the best thing. I look like a complete stupid person sometimes half the time most of the time because i'm just i'm just thinking dude i'm just thinking i i sometimes don't even know what i'm thinking i'm just thinking and it's like oh okay hmm, that's okay no, that has, okay hmm. yeah basically you have to just imagine your idea in your head number eight is make sure that everything is completely straight like i have that big issue that i i have to make sure that everything is like completely straight before i hit record because even though i can crop it later and i'm shooting 4k which is the reason why i'm shooting 4k i just would like to have like a straight frame when i'm beginning the editing process so in case i want like zoom in i have already a straight frame to zoom in i don't have to like straighten it and already have a cropped in and then crop it again to zoom in like that's just gonna lose more quality can you can you see these grids that i have like try to have this grid on so that you can level it to anything that you're shooting and everything is completely straight so in case you want to zoom in later resize it for something like a story or a reel uh everything is like in frame and you have a lot of space to crop 
Number nine should actually be number first. My bad. I completely should have kept this as the first point. But you need to find a story that you need to be talking about, or like something that you want to show visually and with the audio. Like, what do you want your audience to feel? Like, what what would you want to feel once you saw the video that you shot and you edited? Like. what is the intention behind this video if you want to be showing like a stage where you're emotional and sad then you need like a complete cinematic sad song and you need like dim lighting you need like yellow lighting or like um rgb lighting where you're standing and like probably you're sweating or you're like in a dark room and you're sitting and just light coming on your face that like you need to be thinking of the entire story and like probably slapping a voice over over it of you talking about something you need to really think about what you want to shoot you just i mean you can just take the camera and shoot that's how i started you can just shoot any goddamn random thing and just probably try to make it look and might be like oh, okay that's how it's done that's how it's done then create a story out of it that's basically what i did but um that's cuz i had a lot of time in my hand i did drop out of school so then i was like okay cool i have time but usually people have like Like, oh, I just have one hour. I can't spend things so much to shoot random stuff, and then be like, oh, okay, later I have to reshoot again. Fair enough. So then you should really, then you definitely have to sit and think about your idea. <laughs> like you have to sit and think about like what do you want to shoot, so that when you are in the shooting process, you don't waste time, and you know exactly. Okay, I need this shot, that shot, and that shot. I need a close up here. I need a wide shot here. I need a, I, I need the light to be here. If I want to, if I wanted to be a silhouette, then what am I going to do? This right. This is basically what I'm gonna do. But if I don't want a silhouette, I'm just gonna turn the light on, have it in the background, so that it gives some mood or some light at the back. So it'll be like, okay, you at least know there's a wall at the back. At the last number ten would be just practice. Trust me, practice, practice, practice. Just keep shooting, 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 shooting. Just shoot every freaking goddamn day. Just shoot everything random. Shoot something. Put it into an editing app, and then just like learn the filters. You should exactly know how a filter is gonna make this footage look once you put it in the app. That's how good. That's how good your practice should be because that's exactly how I know. Like the moment I shoot something, I know exactly once I put that filter exactly कैसे लगने वाले how it's gonna turn out. I already know it. So if I need to, like like if I know how grainy is gonna look of oh shit that's gonna look really red if I put it with that light. I already know I need to bump up the brightness or reduce the brightness. That flexibility is so important and that comes only with practice. And that is something that even I can't teach you. It has to be self taught because everything that you shoot and what you do with your camera is going to be completely different and not related to what i have done and what i'm going to do so i can't really teach you exactly when to put the exposure up and when to put the exposure down now see probably what you shoot is not going to be looking exactly the same like how i shoot because probably my camera settings are different and the light is different and everything the whole scenario situation is different but uh, these are the settings and these are the tips that i would recommend and i would give you because this is how i do it and this is how i get it done and those are the basics of how you make something look cinematic there's really not much to it apart from all these things to be very honest and yeah also if you want to purchase anything related to what's on my desk and the camera i'm using or the mic i'm using or the light i'm using or the light at the back i'm using or any single thing that i'm using in my equipment or uh, in my work i have a complete amazon store you can visit that i've made lists completely curated for you guys so that everything is in one place you guys can see it purchase it deliver it to your house you don't have to leave the freaking house and in case you have any other questions related to filmmaking you can put in the comment section below i will make a video every week i will read your comments and give you my tips on what i think you should do and how i think you can fix that or how you can shoot that please practice that's just the best thing you can do that's the only thing that's going to help you so it's going to help me and uh yeah see you in the next video cuz your friend shit i need the loyalty back as the brothy i give a fuck if you notice me ain't nobody holding me big wave at your short line so they know us me baby boy from the coast seas It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up.